What's up YouTube? On this episode of Cotty Wapa Overland, we're going to be going to Ohio and exploring the Wayne National Forest in Benton County. <laughs> Cotty Wapa Overland is proudly powered by Dan Cummins Off-Road, home of the Lifetime Powertrain. Also in part by Overland Vehicle Systems, Faster Flate, and Trail Rated Coffee. Be on the lookout for more Expo 2023. Ohio is one of those states where you don't typically think about overlanding, but we had been looking into it and there was a couple places that we wanted to explore. Vinton County and the Wayne National Forest was a couple places that piqued our interest. We got up early one morning and made our way across the Ohio River into Portsmouth. The first thing that caught our eye was all the murals painted along the flood wall here in Portsmouth. We made our way through the flood wall and along the swollen Ohio River. This is where we were planning on meeting our friends, Dan and Robin, from High Lift Off Road out of Cincinnati. Can't you see Robin in there? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? After saying our hellos, we hung around here a little bit longer and checked out some of the barges going up the river and marveled at a few more of the murals. After that, it was time to make our way on into the countryside to see what Ohio had to offer to us. It didn't take us long at all to start finding gravel roads. It had been raining in this area for the last couple days, but the forecast said that it was going to get better, the sun was going to come out tomorrow and the next day. We were really looking forward to it. The gravel road we were on started turning more to dirt, which is exactly what we were looking for. Near the end of the day, Dan and Robin would have an issue that would force them to leave the trip early. They were gonna to have to go back home and not be able to carry on with us through the weekend. One of the things to note about Ohio is the fact that there are some state parks, but they won't allow you to camp just anywhere. Wayne National Forest is pretty small, so there's not a whole lot of dispersed camping in Ohio. So you have to camp one of those things where they want you to camp. Our first night of camp was near Pine Lake in Tar Hollow State Park. A campsite fee here was $23. You have to reserve it online, and then you have to pay another $6.50 for a reservation fee. We did manage to find us a nice site down below the dam of the lake, and that's where we set up and spent the evening.
What's the matter? After eggs, bacon, and trail-rated coffee, we got back on the road. The plan for today was to make our way towards Hawking Hills State Park. We made it to Hawking Hills State Park and all of the parking lots were pretty full. We decided to move on to see if we could find some other sites that weren't quite as populated. There are a lot of times when we run across old cemeteries throughout our travels. When we do, we like to stop pay our respects, and try to learn a little bit about the community and the folks that used to live here. As we made our way through the historic company-owned town of Haydenville, Ohio, we then found ourselves getting closer and closer to the Wayne National Forest. The expectation in this part of the Wayne National Forest was to be able to find some forest service roads along the MVUM map and explore some of the area. But what we ended up finding was the routes that were on the MVUM map only led to trailheads for ATV riding. All of the through routes that we had found on the MVUM map were actually gated closed. So we made short work of that, turned around to go find another location to explore. And this is how we found ourselves in the Zaleski State Forest. While we were in the state forest, we ran across the Lake Hope State Park. Another roadside piece of history that caught our eye was the Hope Furnace. We had to stop and check it out. This iron ore furnace produced iron from 
1854 to 1874 and was one of 69 throughout the state. Next we had to stop and check out the King Hollow Railroad Tunnel, which is now a rail trail. As we continued to make our way through the Zaleski State Forest, the shadows were getting longer and it was getting closer to time to start finding camp. We managed to find a primitive established campground up here next to this fire tower. So a lot of times we'll use just our regular propane fire pit, but every once in a while you've just got to have a real campfire. Now the folks at Bigfoot Bushcraft have sent us some of their products. Now I'm going to check them out. They say that they're windproof, they're waterproof, weather's pretty good right now, but we're just going to check it out and see how they work. They come with a sealed can so you can load them up and put the little capsules in there and keep them nice and fresh. It has the directions on how to use it right inside the lid in case you don't know or can't remember. So you take the fire plug and you're going to bend it in half and bend it back and forth this way a few times and then you're going to start rubbing it in a circular motion and what that's going to do is that's going to fluff it out just a little bit and then we're going to put it right down in here the other thing you can get as part of the package is their striker. So in the bag, you get the ferrule rod and the instructions on how to use it. So you actually get the ferrule rod and you get two different strikers uh, in case you lose one or happen to, to mess one up.
You can see that, that lasts a pretty good long time, and we've probably got a little bit too much wood stacked up on there. But I just wanted to see what it would do. Looks like we've got fire. Um, I'm impressed. It took one strike from the frail rod. That stuff's lasting a good long time. It's going to last plenty long enough to get all of the, the kindling in there burnt. We've got a fire with one strike. Getting to camp early was certainly a welcome change. Not only did it give us a chance to sit around and just in, relax and enjoy, but it gave us a little bit of time to get some computer work done too. The next morning we packed up pretty quick. This was going to be our last day of exploring and then we we're going to have to make our way on home. Today we were in search of something a little bit more challenging. We were in search of the Vinton County unmaintained county roads that we'd seen so much about on other YouTube channels. As we made our way through the town of Zaleski, we come upon the Forest of Honor and the Adena Indians Burial Mound. After visiting this beautiful area and paying our respects, it was time to move on. On our trips, we try to stop at at least one local restaurant and grab something to eat. This one was no different, and Mama Rini's in MacArthur was incredible. If you're ever through there, you've got to stop. By this point, we were running out of time, but we were in the heart of Vinton County. It was time to find the good stuff.
This is listed as a county unmaintained road, and I can tell you for sure, it's unmaintained. The problem we were having was it seemed to be inhabited more by ATVs than it was full-size vehicles. We got to this down tree right here, decided we didn't have the resources to get through it, so we turned around on this particular one. We have made our way off of that road and found another road, but this was not what we were looking for still. We had our sights on some of the other unmaintained roads. We thought we had an idea of where they might be, and we finally found it. This was the one we were looking for. It was obvious for us to tell that we were on the right path, that this was the one that the four-wheel drives and the Jeeps are taking. It was much wider, and this is the stuff we were looking for. We've had the Gladiator out several times since the first of the year, but this was really the first time that we've had a chance to do some harder trails with it and get a chance to see how the Clayton Off-Road Overland Plus lift kit the Fox 2.5 shocks and the Apex Design Autolinks was all going to work together underneath this platform. Passing. Yeah, keep going. Okay. See what's ahead of you? I got it right here in the oh, camera. Because okay. <laughs> it looks like the trail goes the other way. It's a lot faster. Oh. Watch, watch your canopy. This mud here was extremely slick. I wanted to make sure that I didn't slide over in and crush my awning. So what I wanted to do was try to get as close to the tree as I could with moving my wheels up over next to the tree, driver's side, if you will, if it's coming towards the camera. What that does is it levels the Jeep out a little bit and will keep that canopy from being able to hit the tree. It actually sounds very counterintuitive, but what you want to do is get as close to the trees as you can 
and that will help level your vehicle out. One might ask, well, Bill, why didn't you just swing wide around that and not have to worry about the tree? The problem was, is just off the passenger side there was about an eight foot drop. Hey, this way, just a tad. Whoa. Come on, Timmy. As we made it to the top of the hill, we turned left. And from the looks of going downhill here, it looked like it was going to be just as much fun as coming up. Dropping. One difference between this side of the road and the other side of the hill was it was quite a bit more narrow going down this way. This could be a problem. touching it. This is how I get it to garage too. After we took a couple of inches of height out of the Jeep by letting down the airbags and the tires as low as we could, we were able to get under that tree without any problem and hoping that would be the only one. We didn't make it very far at all before we would run into our next tree issue. The air pressure trick wasn't gonna work here. I don't know if you will or not. It was time to break out a different, more conventional method. After clearing that little section of the tree, it was time to make our way on down the trail video I watch people come up this way. Yeah, that, yeah. that could be challenging on some of the...
As we made our way past the Macedonia Church, we decided it was probably a good idea to call it here for the trip. Vinton County, Ohio is definitely a place that we're going to come back to and explore some more. We hope you've enjoyed riding along with us as much as we've enjoyed doing it. Until next time, see ya.